On today's episode, I'm going to show you a host of different guitar accessories, gadgets, and very strange devices marketed to guitar players, and we're going to decide together if they're practical or pointless. It's that simple. Let's just do it. First up are the Barefoot Buttons Stomp Switch Toppers. These go on top of your stomp switch. Uh, here's one that has Thorpey's brand name on it. Uh, back in the day, they sent me the same pack. This one's branded JHS. You know, sell it with your pedal, sell it on your site. Here's one from Beatronics, And then all the big stores like Sweetwater and those places sell these. So you have your pedal with your foot switch. And maybe on your board, it's a little hard to hit that button properly every time. Maybe it's a tap tempo button or something. So you just put this on there, tighten down an Allen, and it makes the stomp switch bigger. Now, a person like me, I think I'm the target audience. I have larger feet. Sometimes it's hard to like, you know, navigate the giant pedal board. I've tried these and just never stuck with them. But what do you think? That's what matters. Let's fight about whether or not these are practical or pointless in the comments. Next up is an item made by Proco that honestly I never heard of. I've never seen it anywhere and I was doing some research and stumbled across it. And uh, it's, it's something unique, I'll tell you that. It's called the Rat Tail. It's made by Proco. So the idea here is that this is a distortion cable. You know, we go through great lengths of cable to make our signal clean and strong. And this one though has a knob you turn and you go from true bypass, which is actually in the copy. It's a true bypass cable. Uh, and then you have a gain setting one and a gain setting two. I just wanna read the copy. It says, wanna goose the front end of your amp with some gnarly sounding dirt out of pedal board real estate? Then plug your guitar into the Proco Rat Tail Distortion Cable. Loaded with the same clipping diodes as a vintage rat distortion pedal, one in four and four eights, I assume. This cable is a great way to propel your amp into sweet, grungy overdrive. A three position switch at your instrument's input puts two ranges of distortion, plus a true bypass toggle right at your fingertips. Complete with composite conductive vinyl and copper braid shielding. I don't know what that is, but it sounds impressive. And a rugged matte PVC jacket. Cable wears a jacket. The Rat Tail Distortion Cable is a quick, easy way to edge your guitar tone. Uh, I do wanna have a disclaimer here. Um, inside the other end, it takes a battery and it takes these tiny little batteries. They're so small that my giant freakish hands won't even allow you to see them and they went dead, so we just opened it up and forced a AA battery to power this. I mean, those are so small. They're like a speck of life. Like you can't even, I lost them, they're gone. We're gonna jam on this and you're gonna decide, is the rat tail practical or pointless? Guitar tuners didn't always exist. Sometimes people just tune by ear or to a piano or to each other. And then, you know, we get things like these giant tube tuners, or weighs 500 pounds, has a microphone in it. You know, so Led Zeppelin's on stage. They're tuning with this kind of stuff. Then we get digital tuners and then in about 1985, we get the first pedal tuners. And these are the standard, but there's been this recent uprising of headstock tuners. I remember buying my first one probably in 98 from Musician's Friend. It was an IntelliTouch. You know about IntelliTouch, some of you do. We got a lot of options here. We have uh, a Korg one, 
Peterson even has a strobe tuner that goes on top. We have the Snark. This is probably the best selling one ever. The Polytunes, Ernie Ball. And we even have this really cool tuner that I love. Nick loves it well. You love this one, Nick? I do. It's the NS Micro Sound Hole Tuner for acoustics. Highly recommended. Do you even need pedal tuners, giant tube tuners? Are the clip-ons gonna last? Are they practical or are they pointless? Paper was first invented, we think, in 25 AD by the Chinese. And there's been a constant problem with this for hundreds and hundreds and millions of years. You get a big pile of cash from your hot gig, you set it down before you count it, because, I don't know, you're watching TV, you're hungry, you're thirsty, and it's windy in your room. The wind starts blowing that fat stack of cash all over the place. But you know what? MXR solved this problem in 1978 when they introduced the MXR paperweight. Now you can take that money, that big stack of cash you got at that smoking sweet gig, put it down on top, no more wind, no more problem. Is it practical or pointless? I don't know, but I think it speaks for itself. Also, it's a little strange that Analog Man at some point ended up with a stash of these. Like you could buy NOS MXR paperweights. I, I just thought that's worth mentioning. You've probably heard of, seen, owned, or broken an Ebo. They came out decades ago. I've had a ton of them. I think I got my first one in 2001 or two, and I've broken at least 30 to 50 of them on stage. Well, there's a new product in town, and honestly, I think it replaces the Ebo. It is called the Soundstone. And honestly, it comes in this little bag. It's delightful. The bag alone, I mean, I may use it for other things, but that's for another episode. Here it is, nine volt battery. You turn the switch on. It just basically puts a magnetic presence over your string and holds a string infinitely. So you can hold it over that and play tap on type stuff, slides, and yeah, it's an electronic bow effect. You know, I'm not a pro with this yet. It feels a little different than the Ebo. I gotta, I gotta step up my game, but I think I'm good enough to demo it right now. And while we do this jam, I think it's your turn to chime in again and just say, is it practical or pointless? And in the description below, fill out the link. It's a giveaway thing down there. You'll see it. And we're gonna give away a soundstone. We'll mail it to you. So do that or don't, don't really care, but definitely watch the jam because we put a total of like five minutes into it. is an item that I purchased in 110 degree weather in Fort Wayne, Indiana at Sweetwater's Gear Fest, outside gear festival showcase thing. Uh, they have like a yard sale tent. This is the Pulstron, uh, I think it's a tremolo, an exciting new pulsating guitar effect and cable in one unit. The back says, uh, some stuff like explore your creativity. You know, we, we Googled this and Google actually said it looks like there are not many results. I haven't seen that in a while. So it says the Pulsetron is a light activated sound effects unit designed to operate in low or bright light room conditions. It can be used with any guitar, bass or keyboard. It just goes on and, you know, try new sounds. Move your hand up and down over the Pulsetron. Move your hand across the pulse draw, moving your hand over. It's just like do stuff with your hand. And it says at the end, let your imagination fly. I paid 20 bucks for this. 
Uh, if you live in Las Vegas, I do need your help. There's an address on here. We want to get to the bottom of this. It says Rust Star Electronics, 6731 West Bonilo Drive, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89103. So if you're in Vegas, you know, let us know. There's a phone number too. Call this phone number if you're watching, 702-367-3665. That's 702-367-3665. And ask them about the exciting new guitar effect called the Pulstron. We're gonna we're gonna hook this up. I'm gonna open it up here. Uh, yeah, it was originally twenty seven dollars. I got it for twenty, so I got a bargain. We have like this light sensor. We're gonna plug this into the guitar. This goes out to the amp, and then your signal is in this light sensor. We have some hundred year old 3M tape. I'm just gonna gaff tape it down. One of the greatest accessories ever. And uh, I think the idea is you move your hand back and forth and create tremolo. There is a possible problem if you don't have full light on a photo resistor, it's gonna make the signal of the guitar really dark and crappy. So there's another accessory that could help with this. We're just gonna rig this up. I feel good about it. Nick, you excited to like- I'm freaking stoked. We're gonna rig up something here. There is a product that's really, really cool by Rockstock called the Bright Switch. And you put it on your board uh, and you can charge your cell phone or iPad from it. And it also has a USB light. So we're gonna hook this up, hook a light onto the guitar and just do a lot of stuff with that. We're gonna see where this takes us. And I'll, uh, I'll even put this miniature hand on my finger so I have two hands. Just let us know, is it practical or pointless? <laughs> say using this as seen in that video when I turn it on the difference is night and day <laughs> next up is an accessory that's highly controversial some people don't use them some people say they're stupid some people love them some people fight over why they love them hate them different types of this accessory I have seen full out punches in the face at Nam over this. When I saw a guy dragged through the bathroom and thrown into a stall, it's serious. It is the subject of picks. And here's the thing, it's hard to pick the perfect pick. And I have some options here that I wanna go through and just elaborate on a bit. First up, we have a very, very generic and, you know, honestly, almost poorly crafted walrus pick. I don't wanna hate on walrus, I love him. But this is just a normal pick, you know, there's nothing fancy. And, and here's the deal. I played this pick a lot in the shows, great results. But when I compare this lowly simple pick to these other picks, you're gonna see that, I don't know, they're all picks. So we have the walrus pick. Then there's the gravity pick. I love this pick for how it feels. And I, I swear I hear a difference, but I'm probably insane and that's okay. If you're insane and you're okay with yourself, that's fine. And I think that might be the case here. We've shipped thousands, tens and tens of thousands of these. They come in every JHS pedal. So I just wanna read a few comments about this from their website. Uh, you know, you just have to hear what other people are saying and they say what other people are saying. Here are some quotes. Improves articulation and tone by a mile. I have measured articulation and tone and a mile? That's insane. Listen to this one. The picks are never gonna wear down. It is sick. I don't think I've ever worn one down. That is kind of sick. Next up, I am faster moving from pluck to pluck than any cheap, this is a family show, I'm gonna edit this, any cheap A nylon thing. Amazing. There's that one. 
Next up, we have a pick called the Magic Room. Let me tell you about the Magic Room. Sound, strength, sustainability trifecta. It's made from, what's this made from? Bamboo? Yeah. Is it bam made from bamboo? Next up, these are made from wood. I think these are from modguitars.com. Yeah, wooden picks. We're gonna try those, a big one and a small one. And then there's a pick that really, really means a ton to me. It comes in a little jewelry case. I actually had someone buy this for me and bring it from Hawaii on a trip. Uh, I, I don't know where to buy it. There's an address, 845 Front Street, Lahan, Lahaina, Maui. I don't know. It has, they wrote it to me. I've had this for 15 years. And it says inside, prehistoric mammoth ivory. The woolly mammoth was the distant cousin of the modern elephant. Although extinct for 20,000 years, their preserved remains are occasionally found intact with long curved ivory tusk. Mammoth ivory can take on a variety of colors. Although scarce and difficult to work with, each piece of mammoth ivory is unique and exist as a witness to prehistoric times. So here it is, this is a prehistoric pick. You know, there's vintage picks, then there's this. This is a next level thing. Let's shoot some things out as picks. Let's shoot these picks out. Let's get to the bottom of, do picks really matter? Is it practical or pointless to worry about your picks? This is the Walrus pick. This is the JHS pick. This is the Magic Room. This is the Ancient Tusk. This is the Small Wooden Pick. This is the Big Wooden Pick. Walrus Pick. JHS Pick. Magic Room Pick. Ancient Tusk Pick. Small Wooden Pick. Big wooden pick. The box that the ancient toothpick came in. A giant clamp. Bernie Sanders. Next up is an accessory that I saw and I bought it because it looked interesting and we're about to find out what I think about it, maybe, but definitely what you think about it. It is called the Submarine Pickup. There's a link in the description below. As with all of these, you can go read more about it. But here's the idea. You put this pickup sensor under a few strings, one string, two, or three, and you send signal out of this to a different output. So you have your normal electric guitar, you know, whatever, Strat, Tele, I'm gonna play a Tele. So two pickups, pick out whatever you wanna use. That's your normal guitar signal. Then this is like on top of that through a different channel or a different amp. So you could run out to just a bass amp maybe, put it on your low strings, put it on your high strings and put effects on it that don't affect the low strings. You get the idea. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play my normal guitar pickups do a clean amp with some reverb and add a little bit of quarter note delay with a cub. And then through this, I'm gonna do the C9 organ machine and I'm gonna put this on the bass strings, the top two E and A, and I'm gonna process them with like this whirly organ sound. And then I'm gonna use a fat cat distortion and kind of gristle that up a little bit. And I think you're gonna like it because it's like I'm playing two things at once, even though I'm just playing one thing. And that's basically wizardry. So is it practical or pointless? Just figure it out while we jam. It's up to you.
Earlier we talked about guitar picks and, you know, played some different ones to see what we think. But there's this other trend. It's been going around for maybe, maybe 10 years? Not, not quite 10 years. Uh, it started with people putting Altoids mint cans on their pedal board and I think putting picks in them. So we have this thing now. So Walrus has this, you slide it open and, you know, it comes with picks, which is cool. It's like a, like a swag type gift thing. They give them out at NAMM or mail them with packages. October Audio sent us one. Yeah, picks are in there. Harmony, guitar. Of course has these round ones. These are cool. I don't know where I stand. I, I don't know. Do I want to put picks on my pedal board? Is this, is this pointless or practical? Do you want to do that? Maybe you have a spot on your board. I don't know. And I personally need help deciding what I think. So help me decide. Maybe I'll put one on my board or not. Maybe this never happened. Next and last is something that I've used for years. So I guess in a way I have to say I love it because I do love it. Um, it is the Kaiser Cut Capo. You've probably heard of a capo, which simply clamps onto your guitar and in theory and practicality simply shortens the neck of your guitar so if you put it on the second fret and play a G you're actually playing an A so it helps you transpose and get different sounds it's really useful and really fun and this is different I think it started from people flipping their traditional Kaisers upside down because they have this section and they would just cover three strings. So they made one that doesn't have the longer part here. And so you put it on your guitar and your E bass string goes through here untouched. And then your A, D, and G are clamped down at the second fret. You can do any fret, you can do crazy stuff with this, but the practical usage that everyone kind of starts with is put this on the second fret and your guitar is in a type of open E instantly. It's really great and you always see it on acoustic, which I feel like, you know, it kind of robs electric players of thinking about this. I love it on electric and if you're crazy, you can double them up, you know. You can put this anywhere and then this two behind it and move your open E to higher registries like F sharp, G, whatever you want to do. We're going to do a jam on it. I think we're going to do something meaningful. A lot of times on the show, we just riff, you know, we just go after it. I feel like we need to create art. Let's do some art. And then you tell me if it's practical or pointless. You're not going to hurt my feelings. It's just my art and just me pouring my soul out through song and music. It's fine. learn from this? Where do we go from here? I've presented tons of accessories that are possibly practical or completely pointless. And honestly, I'm starting to wonder if this episode's practical or pointless. And I need you to go to the comments and just let it all out on me. I want to sit around at night and read your comments and hate towards me and love and really fight with that as a person. Let it mentally torment me. And I think that's an important thing to do as a human, as a person. Uh, and that's the end of this episode. Practical or pointless, you know? Maybe that's how I feel about myself sometimes. Maybe maybe life's just a vapor. I don't know. Maybe maybe everything's useless. I don't know. Let's go to record time. Yeah, whatever. It's pointless. Hey, everyone. It's future me, like with a haircut and stuff. Not the past me that you've been watching in this episode. I just want you to know that we are doing Pedals the Musical. It's a 25, 30 minute musical about the history of guitar pedals. It's gonna be on YouTube 
uh, right here where you are actually, and it's Saturday the 13th and Sunday the 14th. It's a live theatrical musical with like cast, original songs, stories, emotions. It's actually a thing. I know you still don't believe it. You've seen the ads. You're thinking it's some kind of weird early April Fool's thing. It's not. It's going to happen. So if you don't watch it, you won't see it. So go watch it because like I'm from the future, technically. You should listen to people from the future. Today's record time is brought to you by 1996 Fashion Nugget by Cake. <sighs> practical or pointless. That's why I pulled this record out. I think it's amazing. Highly practical in my guitar playing life. I remember being right at the front of learning guitar riffs, printing tabs out, and I heard the distance. I watched the video on MTV. I would watch Greg Brown's fingers play the riff, and this older kid that I would sometimes see at break time, he explained to me, he's like, oh, two, three, like he would tell me the tab numbers on the string, and this record's so awesome. They're a little weird, a little bizarre, but I love the style. It's one of the only things I'll ever listen to that's rock with trumpets. Not a huge ska fan, and this isn't ska, but to some people, I think it could trigger them. It might trigger you. I want you to listen to it. Let me know what you think. My favorite tracks are The Distance, Frank Sinatra, Race Car Yaya's. The whole thing's really great. Just check it out in the comments. Let me know what you think. What's your favorite cake record? And also remember, I said it at the beginning here, is it practical or pointless? I need, I need your vote. Have to have it. Thanks so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was practical. Like it if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to get notifications of future episodes. Check out thejhsshow.com for all kinds of things you might find interesting, including merchandise and other really good information like articles and all the record times we've ever shared and just lots of stuff. It's all over there. And then you can be a patron of the JHS show. Check out that link below. There's a lot of long form talks and very nerdy things that a lot of people who are watching who are nerds will enjoy. So click that as well. Have a great day and just go accessorize. Do whatever you want. Just buy some of the stuff or don't or I don't know. Just do whatever you want to do. That's, that's what I'm going to do now. A human skull. A whirlwind direct box. A plastic goat. Abraham Lincoln. An unopened copy of U2's Unforgettable Fire on VHS from the mid 80s. 1986 Larry Bird. A Klon Centaur. A Nash P bass style bass electric guitar. My pet penguin from childhood, which I had stuffed and plasticized. An apple from Trader Joe's. A house shoe that I bought in California on a trip and it kind of hangs out here in the office. An Energizer AA battery. A Big Stanley. A Steve Stevens sound laser. It's modified. A Chipson 250 millimeter pick. A Sobtech Model 001 MiG-50. My right in-ear. That silver YouTube award thing they sent us for having over a hundred thousand subscribers. Dot Warner, her nose is missing. A Vertex still string clean drive. A Sure SM57. The other end of the Sure SM57. A framed picture of the Morning Glory from our 2014 NAM booth. <laughs>